It's changed all of us. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Umbrella Academy Season 2 video explaining the ending, what that big teaser for Season 3 was going to be. Yes, they've been renewed for Season 3, so they will be doing more episodes. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. And even though it should go without saying, as the title of the video implies, careful for spoilers from all of Umbrella Academy Season 2. So we'll be explaining everything that happens, all the big secrets that they reveal, and what's going on with Season 3. I'll just number these as we go along to stay organized. There were a bunch of Easter eggs and a bunch of comic book references that they get into, even though they changed a lot about the comic book plot from Umbrella Academy. Love the big shout out for Watchmen during this too. The end is nigh. But as you all saw, the Umbrella Academy is finally able to reunite and meet with their father, Reginald Hargreaves, in the past, but he can't stand them, just like he kind of seemed like he couldn't stand them when he was trying to raise them, like he just has this deep dislike of children. Why would I ever adopt seven children if I hate children? But he does wind up talking to Five and a lot of other people in earlier episodes about the uncertainty of time travel and how everything can change in a matter of seconds, and how even if you think you're doing everything right and you know the future, even changing minor things in the past can have vast consequences in the future. So obviously this is all set up for that big twist at the end, as well as that new time travel superpower that Five develops in the finale. It's also important to note, when you think about them messing with the past, obviously there's a lot of things that they mess with, even though it seems like they're able to fix things by the end, they still make a lot of really big changes, like Diego, for instance, did everything he could to mess with Mother in the past, resulting in her turning against Reginald Hargreaves, they also joke about him letting Pogo loose, you let my chimp loose, more on that in the new future timeline that they create in a second. So even though it seems like they fixed everything in the end, they did not fix everything. They eventually learn that it's Vanya again who causes the apocalypse because, as Diego says, Vanya is always going to be the bomb. But the whole reason she causes it this time is because she's being tortured into psychosis by the FBI who thinks that she's a Russian through that whole subplot with the wife, Harlan, and her husband. She breaks, loses control of her powers again, and causes this big explosion. The reason why it causes the apocalypse, or leads to the apocalypse, is because the FBI building where the blast goes off is so close to JFK's procession in Dallas that the FBI, the government, and Kennedy blame it on a Russian-Soviet plot because it's the Cold War, so Kennedy declares war on Russia. There's a big invasion, then full-scale nuclear war leading to the apocalypse that we saw in episode 1. They are able to stop her, Ben sacrifices himself to save Vanya, then passes on to heaven as he implies. The great white light is what he calls it, like a voice is telling me to move on. In a flashback, you actually learn that a younger version of Klaus, during his funeral, convinced ghost Ben to ignore the voice of God, or whatever you want to call it, and just stay as a ghost on planet Earth, hanging out with him. And now in this moment in the future, technically their future, even though we're in the past, he's finally moving on like he should have done years ago. So he's like, don't be sad for me, I should have done this a long time ago. The team then realizes that Vanya accidentally passed some of her power to Harlan when she saved him earlier in the season. He's not able to control it and is just going off the chain. That's what the red lights and the special energy are when she's giving him mouth to mouth, trying to revive him. They kind of explained this during season one, so remember that special red energy that you see Reginald release on his home planet, those lights as they sort of escape in the flashbacks, when his original wife lay dying and the others of his kind seem like they're fleeing their planet in the rockets? That is the special energy that gave all the children around the world powers and caused them to be born under those weird circumstances at the same time. So the showrunner explained that this is Vanya just sharing some of that special power with Harlan. So that's why even when she takes back most of her power in the finale from him, Harlan is still left with some special abilities, like you see him levitating that bird as they're driving away. The bird is also clever foreshadowing for the Sparrow Academy twist at the end. They also finally explain who and what Lila really is during that big final battle. She's secretly one of their sisters. She was one of the many special children born all over the world on the same day with special abilities. Her ability is just defined as power mimicry. She can copy the powers of anyone she encounters, even at great distance, as it's shown during her battle with Vanya, when she's standing really far away, but she's still able to copy Vanya's powers. 
They reveal that the handler wanted to control her as an asset and plant her as a mole inside the Umbrella Academy, so she had number five take out her parents. Once they kill the handler, Lila then freaks out, takes one of the briefcases, and just time travels away to who knows where until season three. It seems like she still cares about Diego on some level, and the family, as well as Diego, tried to accept her as one of their own. Like, you're one of us. You're part of the family. You just never knew it. Make all the Game of Thrones sister-loving jokes that you want, because now Luther is also not the biggest sister lover inside the group. So she'll probably help them with a much bigger threat in Season 3. Even though they're implying that the Sparrow Academy is this bigger threat, there's probably something even bigger that they all have to come together to stop. That probably gets into some of the Hotel Oblivion stuff from the comics, so I'll explain that in a second too. But then the team thinks that they're returning to 2019 a couple days after the original apocalypse and everything is fine, but Reginald Hargreaves is alive now in 2019, and instead of number 5's picture above the fireplace, it's Ben's. And it's revealed that he never wound up creating the Umbrella Academy, instead he created something called the Sparrow Academy, in a very much alive version of Ben, shows up, followed by five other shadowy teenagers in a floating green box that seems like it's sentient. It just implies that Reginald founded a very different version of the team in this version of the timeline, and some of the things that they changed in the past, the things that they messed with, caused these big butterfly effect changes. They're just left to wonder if these are their enemies or WTF is going to happen now, what new catastrophe have they inadvertently caused? Because as we learned from the last two seasons, they're usually the ones that wind up causing the apocalypse that they're trying to solve. Usually they find out about a disaster, but then in trying to stop it, it becomes this big self-fulfilling prophecy. This is also where we get to the Hotel Oblivion storyline from the comics. In the comics, the Hotel Oblivion is a special prison where Reginald Hargreaves, who we learn is an alien, uses to house all the supervillains and worst beings of the universe that they catch. During season two, the show keeps referring to Reginald's quote-unquote interests in the dark side of the moon, so it's likely that that's where the TV version of Hotel Oblivion is located. In the comic book storyline, this alternate version of an Umbrella Academy team shows up at the end of the Hotel Oblivion storyline, meeting the main team, and they have a similar reaction, like, who are you? Where did you come from? Are you friend or foe? What's going on here? Why is there an alternate version of the Umbrella Academy running around? So if you look at the outlines of these alternate team members, it seems like there's still two girls and four boys, just like the original team. I'm assuming that the green box is like the alternate version of Pogo on the team, because there's no Pogo anywhere to be found here in his pictures and above the fireplace. So in this new timeline, think about how Mother broke it off with Reginald in the past after she learned some of his darker secrets. Like, I can't be a part of this. I can't be with you. Peace. I'm out of here. Through the flashbacks and Pogo's origin story, you learn that he was always more loyal to Mother, so I'm assuming that in the new timeline, Reginald never got back together with her and reconciled, and she just went off to do her own thing, Pogo going with her. So Mother might also be alive in present day 2019 as well. So the big tease of season 3 is also that all these characters who have died are now alive, but they're alternate versions. Also remember, since they went so far to tease Harlan's powers at the end of the finale, an older adult version of Harlan might come back too and have something to do with causing a new apocalypse or helping them prevent it. And as for why it's called the Sparrow Academy and not the Umbrella Academy, earlier in the season when they were thumbing through all of his files in his office, you look at his desk there, there's actually a symbol of a sparrow on one of the files. That's probably the inspiration for creating the quote-unquote Sparrow Academy. And I think in the new timeline, all these kids are different because Reginald Hargreaves released that special energy into the world later in the timeline than normal, so all the kids around the world weren't born till later in the timeline. That explains why Ben and all the other characters are dressed looking like they're kind of teenagers. And because in the past, when he met them, he felt like the OG team was such a bunch of screw-ups that he decided to swerve on them in the future and adopt kids that he felt could become superior to the OG team. The only real funny thing that I haven't addressed in the video yet, though, is that twist ending with the Swede, the one that's left alive. He winds up joining Klaus's cult, Destiny's Children. Obviously, that's meant to be a big joke about Destiny's Child, the group, and him reciting the lyrics, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls, like it was his scripture. The way it seems like they're playing this time travel twist is more of an Avengers Endgame style twist where even if you change the past, you can't really affect your future. You just create alternate new realities and they're just living in this new alternate reality where things are a little bit different in the future with a different version of the team. 
But everyone, let me know in the comments if there's any big questions you have or anything you felt like I didn't address during this video. I tried to hit all the big stuff, obviously the big WTF moments. They didn't say when season three is supposed to be released, but I'm assuming they're going to start filming that sometime by at least early next year. In other related Netflix things, they're working on Stranger Things season four again right now. So we'll probably get a new Stranger Things season four trailer sometime early next year. They'll probably release that sometime towards the end of next year. But everyone click here for my brand new Stranger Things season four trailer video and click here for my brand new Benedict Cumberbatch Doctor Strange 2 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.